one or uh, you don't start with one you start with three so here's the countdown in three two one you are all nothing <laughs> The World of Warcraft podcast, so you don't have to. This is the instance. Oh, I shouldn't mute myself. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the instance. This is the instance episode 629. It is February 5th, 2021. Scott Johnson here. Garrett Wines are all over there. Hello, Garrett. Hello, Scott. Happy Friday. Thanks, man. Uh, that was fast. I felt like we just saw each other like five minutes ago, and uh, here we are again. So weeks yep, mean nothing yep. anymore. But over the internet. That's true. I haven't been seeing much of anyone. No. Uh, we were just thinking the other day, or talking the other day, my wife and I, about how it would be, maybe um, we'd still be another month away from hearing, but about a month away from hearing what BlizzCon would be, or when it would be. And uh, oh, you mean like the announcement of the actual in person one and all that jazz? Yeah, and us sitting here being like, do we buy tickets? Do we are we jerks and just assume we're getting media access again? <laughs> yeah, all those things, those are usually the feelings that, we, that you and I would have in about 30 days. Now, here's the problem <laughs> I don't know what they're doing, like this BlizzCon online, which we're going to talk about, or Bliz, sorry, BlizzCon line, uh, that we'll talk about today in our in our uh, our main topic. Uh, I guess in theory this replaces all things blizzard events this year and that they're not indeed planning a 2021 event in the same way that they did not plan a 2020 event um maybe holding all their sauce for 2022 assuming anybody can do anything even then uh so i i don't know but i find it curious uh this feeling i'm having of this usual like it's about that time of the year where i gotta make some decisions do i go ahead and get the hotels reserved because I just gonna assume that they're either gonna get send me media passes or need me in some way or something else is gonna happen or not. Some years has been a big fat or not, so you never know. And I don't know how to feel about it because part of me hates that process, but part of me really wants to go again. <laughs> is this so, just a really long way of you saying that you uh, feel you made an error by not attending the most recent BlizzCon? Oh, I totally feel that way because my goal there was <laughs> take it. You know, 2018 was a was a big year for me there. 2019, I was like, I'm going to take this one off. I'm going to get some other stuff done. I'm going to focus on some things, and I'm going to be prepped for that 2020, man. I'm so ready for that. Well, yeah, that just tells you. You just never freaking know, right? You don't know. So, Well, uh, this is pretty uh, unprecedented uh, to use a, a keyword that has been overused uh, into the ground over the past year. But, but it, I mean, it really is. Um, so It's weird. Who the hell knows, right? And I haven't even thought about this year's like in person potentially BlizzCon. It hasn't even really crossed my mind because yeah. hey, you remember when we all thought this was gonna be over in three months? Yeah. Like, oh god, three months staying inside. This is gonna be the worst. <laughs> How will we ever make oh my god, it's twenty twenty one, I'm still inside. What's going on? Well, Blizzard didn't um, even announce that they weren't doing one until <laughs> what june or something or we weren't yeah sure until... it took them a while to like properly cancel but you know i don't know i haven't thought about it but if i were them i mean not knowing all the finer details but i would assume booking conference space is probably the cheapest it's ever been right now yeah and yeah. i would hazard a guess that cancellation policies are probably pretty lax on trying to reserve space so yeah. were i blizzard i would probably go ahead and lock in a date just in case, you know, vaccinations just, you know, start rolling out like crazy sure. down the line. And, you know, there's a, a, a glimmer of hope of things being open come November. But uh, well, what's the harm? I don't know. Really? I, I agree with you. What's the harm in doing it? Like they've got the they've got the pull and the power with their relationship with Anaheim to do this, to lock it in early yeah. and then change their mind if they need to, given the circumstances. So I'll bet they have. I'm never going to tell us that. I, I, I wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. But again, there's a lot of assumptions in my statement just then because I, I don't know what the policy is at yeah. Anaheim Convention Center right now. You know, maybe maybe they've gone back to being kind of strict. Like, yeah, you can book us, but our cancellation policy back to what it used to be and yada, yada, yada. Yeah, maybe um, they're huge I'm not dicks. sure. I, yeah. I don't, I'm not personally shopping for conference space on the Anaheim, <laughs> Anaheim Convention Center floor right now. <laughs> no, me neither. Turns out, got nothing I, I need to do there right now. But um, I can't say I would be sad if they announced a 2020 2021 date and then just said to everybody hey this is tentative we're, we're thinking you know i don't know but given that they're doing this thing this month 
that that also plays into it. We'll see more on that in a bit. But first, we got to grind out these side quests. All right, uh, let's dive right into it. Activision Blizzard gave their fourth quarter earnings report for their 2020 financial results, and it happened. And I was very curious about this one because um, uh, there was a new Call of Duty. So on the Activision side, that seemed like that might be either good or bad for them, depending on how it did. And Warzone continues to be a big deal. Although I can tell you this about it, Scott. What's Call that? of Duty definitely more gigabytes than any Call of Duty before. Dude, I have a complaint. I'd like to register a complaint. Um, you, you're my, you're my sounding board on this since I don't have an actual Activision person here to talk to. So I'm going to complain to you. Um, I don't mind a little Call of Duty now and again. You and I have played together a little bit. It's a fun time, it's a good time. Everyone likes a little Call of Duty once in a while. It's you know the reason why it's a big popular thing, and they make a new one every year. All that being said. Uh, I went over there the other day because uh, I got a whole new rig going and I got a new hard drive and that new hard drive needed new games on it. And I thought, oh, I should put Warzone on here at least. I'll just put Warzone because that's all I was playing before. So I'll just put that on there and have it on there. And it says, hey, how are you, how you doing? Uh, how would you like to put 250 gigabytes worth of Warzone on your thing? How is that game? How is that mode? 250 gigabytes by it freaking self it doesn't make any sense to me and why is every patch 85 gigabytes it's too I, much i do still think it's one of the best looking games i've ever freaking played um so it is pretty high resolution especially when i'm sitting at home on my computer playing it at 4k but yeah yeah i'm i'm i share your concern there man and if if i oh, i'm sorry was i supposed to be role playing the customer <laughs> complaint department uh hi mr <laughs> Jansen, I'm very sorry you feel that way. Oh, it's Johnson. Sorry, it's Johnson. We, we can offer sorry. you we can offer you ten free days of World of Warcraft oh, subscription. Okay. Well, I already have a subscription to that. So how how do you uh, how are you gonna? I don't know why I'm going into my default mom voice. <laughs> <laughs> I like it though. Uh, so anyway, it's just dumb to be that big when World of Warcraft itself is like a hundred and something gig and it's 15 years old and i know it's a different thing it's all different assets i get it but there are a lot of other uh big freaking battle royale games that are not 250 gigabytes anyway back to the point uh, i was real curious about how things are going on the blizzard side of course there's one quote that caught my eye before i get to the meat of this and i wanted to mention this first um they said bobby kodak said multiple initiatives are underway to experience World of Warcraft on more on a more consistent basis and on more platforms than ever before. No idea what that means ultimately. But let's Bubble. let's pause Bubble. there for a second. What do you think about that? What do you think that means? I, I, consistent is weird. Like on a more consistent basis, what 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 the heck does that mean? I don't just, know. Uh, I don't that know. can mean all sorts of things, but more platforms just makes me go, oh, mobile. How is it not on mobile already? Let's just do it. Mobile. Yeah. Mobile. Put it on mobile. Let's do go. Do it on mobile. Yeah. Um, and I know we were having console co conversations like a year ago when they were sprucing up their controller support for World of Warcraft. But, yeah. they, you know, they eventually put out an official statement being like, no, 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 this is just an accessibility concern. We are not currently bringing this to any any consoles. Right. It's for people so, who need it. We have a dude in our guild. I think he's still in our guild who uh, is legally blind and just about just about as blind as you can be is the way he used to tell me and um the way he plays warcraft is a combination of things dealing with displays and like color contrast and some other things but part of it is is controller and he's always he's used it since oh geez we were doing wrath raids with him and he was using some kind of weird controller setup back in like 06 07 or whatever it was i guess it had been 08 or 09 but uh yeah. but yeah like when that came out, I was like, oh, well, they're not really working on console versions of this. They're not trying to get to the new generation of consoles. But if they're going to say multiple initiatives are underway to experience WoW on a more consistent basis, what that tells me is I can take it with me or have it accessible to me more. So that does say mobile or that does say console or it says something more than just my PC version of this game. So I don't know. I don't know. How, I don't know what to predict around that other than. Yeah, yeah, and we've had the conversation before. There's a lot of a lot of technical things where my brain goes, "How's that going to work? How is this going to work?" Right. I'm not entirely sure. All I know is that, like, from a being able to run the game aspect, we're we're there with phones. Yep. Like they can they can do it. Oh yeah. Uh, but it's you know to me a lot of my concerns lie in actually controlling the game. Yeah. But 
pretty sure click to move is still an option. It's a checkbox somewhere there in there in, in my World of Warcraft options. Yeah, I'd still so, be okay even with like, you know, I'd mostly for solo daily, you know, world quests and just sort of getting your daily stuff done, Torghast runs or whatever. I think you could do it pretty well with a phone and touchscreen and movement controls and all of that. Somebody, I wish I had it now so I could show the chat room, but somebody had made a mock-up of what that layout could look like, where you would put certain elements and how you would make them function and work. And it looked pretty legit, not like Blizzard made it, but it did look, you know, it looked at that and went, oh, okay, that's, that's, I think that would work on a, on a phone. And it is easy for us and other, you know, people to consider themselves core gamers to just immediately poo-poo any kind of, let's take this into mobile. But dude, I'd love to be able to do some of the stuff I do in WoW on the run. I'd love to have this thing on the toilet with me or on the couch while my wife's watching something I'm not really into and I can do this instead. Like, I I would not turn this down. I'm not saying I want them to, you know, reinvent the wheel or take too long doing it or, you know, make it bigger than it needs to. But if they gave me a phone version of this game, I wouldn't say no. Let's go. Let's play Warcraft. I don't care. I'll play it wherever I want to. I do what I want. Is what yeah. I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. Me, same. Same. I mean, this is this is a podcast that's uh, you know, over 600 episodes deep. Like clearly, the folks on here we're PC gamers. Yep. But um, yeah, I would, I would, I would interact with it as well. Hell, I'd finally start fishing. Yeah. Right. Fishing and uh, <laughs> um, uh, like Farming all your professions. In general. Yeah. Yeah. All that stuff would be much better on mobile. And we've said that for years, but. We'll see what they do. Uh, they also went on to, oh, this I thought was interesting from the numbers standpoint. Blizzard, uh, the, the report is three columns large. It's Activision, which was over one point something billion in revenue. So they did really well. Blizzard, which was about a half a billion dollars. And then King, who I always forget they own now. So you're, you're, you're Candy Crush people. Uh, they were also at about half a billion, literally neck and neck with Blizzard. That blows my mind to me no wonder they want to do more with mobile no wonder that business is so alluring to them and everybody wonders why are they bothering with immortal and whatever it's because there's massive amounts of money to be made here if that little acquisition called king can bring in 500 billion dollar or million dollars in revenue and you're barely able to eke that same thing out with existing blizzard revenue and it's all up that's that's up revenue like they're they're that's growth like, that's crazy. So, of course, they want to get into mobile more. Who wouldn't even now? So, it's it's so easy for us as, again, PC and core gamers to look at Blizzard and go, quit fiddling around with, you know, focus on what we love. That's just, that's for nobody. That's for grandmas or whatever. I don't know, dude. There is bank to be made. I, all, I, I, there's, I, I know I'm the king of car analogies, but there's a huge one that I always think of here. And it's just like, I do both. Do both. Because with cars, if you're excited about sports cars... I've got bad news for you. Nobody buys them. Nope. You know what's what's keeping your favorite manufacturer afloat? The boring SUVs. Yep. <laughs> the yep. things that they sell boatloads of. And so, yeah, to me, I'm like, whatever. Whatever Blizzard wants to make, go for it. As long as they keep making some titles, I enjoy playing. Right. But that means they also make other titles I don't enjoy playing. Whatever. I won't play them as long as they're continuing to like keep it a, a, a healthy revenue stream for the company. Yeah. Um, you know, there's there's there are ways where that does impact the games. The more quote unquote hardcore PC audience likes playing. Yeah, I agree. Um, Blizzard Entertainment had 29 million monthly active users. That's actually down a little bit from 30, not much, but a little in quarter three. And they showed extremely high engagement for Shadowlands. Not surprising. That did really well for them this quarter. The Diablo 4, Overwatch 2, and multiple unannounced projects in the works. Uh, like Diablo 2 Resurrected, Mobile Warcraft games, that sort of stuff, uh, are all still under lock and key, so not re gener generating any revenue. Um, and they didn't even make a big deal about... My, my guess is revenue for Overwatch is sort of at a standstill, because what what more can you do? Uh, you either sell the game, or people buy more loot boxes, and at some point you've, you've got diminishing returns on that, and so that stuff didn't even come up... Uh, which I think is interesting. But anyway, World of Warcraft has seen strong engagement in classic and retail through 2020, they said. Full-year franchise net bookings grew 40% year over year. They said they had sharp growth in the fourth quarter attributed to the sales of Shadowlands, which, if you may remember, for about a week and a half, had the highest PC game sales of all time until uh, Cyberpunk came in and took it away. Anyway, 
Let's rerun those numbers. I know some uh, <laughs> some some refunds were issued there. Let's rerun them. I know of one refund in particular that uh, was sent in for me in particular, and uh, I wonder how that does look now. Although that was a console version, so I don't know if it'll count on the PC stuff. But yeah. but anyway, um, they yeah, I actually wouldn't I wouldn't mind knowing what the recount is after all that because there were a lot of people who returned that game. Hey, listen, if anyone's going to ask for a recount, it's going to be the Florida Denizen. So Damn straight, I'll I'll allow it. You know your people. You know what's up. Um, it says here, where were we? Oh, uh, they said this reach, uh, the, the combined, uh, player base that are playing Shadowlands and to some degree classic is the highest level in nearly a decade. Uh, again, no specific numbers about that, but they did claim that shadow, uh, Shadowlands players and their engagement trends are stronger than levels typically seen at this point after an expansion's launch, which I think basically matches what we talked about last week. Our argument that you and I are more engaged at this stage than we usually are or, you know, have been with some previous expansions. Um, and and I think that sounds like that's an overall uh, trend uh, for everybody. Uh, Diablo Immortal received a lot of positive feedback during their test, and uh, they are very happy about that. They are going to do more testing so they can experience the game in further rounds, and they'll do that all ahead of their planned launch later this year. I don't know if that this is the first time we've gotten f- confirmation that this year is the launch. Uh, maybe, maybe not, but anyway. I don't remember like- mention of that, so yeah, I, this is kind of perking my eyebrow as well. Right. Uh, One so, no- oh, I mean, I should- it sure would make sense. It seems strange that it's been this long to begin with. I should have mentioned this already, but they had they did show a loss where normally... There's a BlizzCon size hole loss in what they do. So for those who are ever ultimately confused as to whether or not, and I can't remember where everybody on the show's ever landed over the years, but there's been stuff back and forth about how, well, BlizzCon's just a loss leader for them. They don't make money at it, but it's a great way to engage the community and sell games, blah, 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 all that sort of stuff. But they make money at BlizzCon. Like 100%, they make I, money. I think it's a relatively new thing that that is the case, but yeah, they have they have a team dedicated to it now. Yeah, I think maybe a, the early years, it was less of a concern or whatever, but... They ain't throwing that thing for free. I can promise you that. Um, anyway, so there was some revenue loss there, but overall, everybody's doing all right on this side of uh, <clears throat> on that side of Activision. Whether or not that stuff's sustainable, given that we're only looking at one new release this year in the mobile game with all of its baggage, uh, and not seeing Diablo Four or Overwatch Two until next year which this all seems to confirm that, that we're talking 2022 at least for those two games. If even Overwatch 2 is even a game, like there is a part of me that wonders, dude. Like they announced that thing, showed what looked like stuff you'd see in the game now as just add-ons or or updates and then just said, "All right, moving on." And then went to talk about other stuff. I don't know if Overwatch 2 is a freaking game. <laughs> I mean it is, obviously, but what is what does that even look like? Does it just look All right, like Scott, a, you're in, you're encro- I'm the grumpy Overwatch person here. You're encroaching on my role. I know. <laughs> and I love Overwatch. Don't get me wrong. I love that well, shooter yeah, and I'm I so excited for the new one, but I don't know what it is. I think it's I think it's fair to be skeptical of it. Like, I don't know. I guess Blizzard used to be this. I was about to say that Blizzard isn't really a company that's known for traditional sequels where you just slap another number on it and put it out but i mean there's literally three warcrafts there's two starcrafts there's three diablos is about to be a fourth yeah um so that's not that's not necessarily true uh it's just that like through our lens uh you know as as people who really really got on the blizzard wagon with world of warcraft we we think of our our entry point into the that next level fandom of, of this studio sure. was a game that just is still going and still iterating and never slapped a two afterward after yeah. its name. But yeah, good point. But even with, you know, like the jump from Diablo one to Diablo two and the jump from Diablo two to Diablo three, those were huge leaps. The yeah. amount of time that was between them and the, the graphical uh, uh, capabilities of what computers could do uh, from like two to three or even one to two, those were big leaps and big bounds. Whereas you look at, you know, the in-game footage for Overwatch 2, and you're right. It does not look that different than what we're playing right now. Yeah. But we um, are kind of at a diminishing returns place with graphics as well. Like I, And I know that. And I'll bet if you true. put them both up next to each other on two screens and I could see them being played simultaneously, 
I would probably notice. Oh, okay, this one's using this, and that has RTX support, and this one yeah. doesn't. Blah, 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 whatever. Yeah, it's like I don't know. Like think about it, going from like Mario Galaxy Two to Mario Odyssey. It's like Nintendo games have a look. They have a style. They are very stylized, and right. they're not the type of thing that you like. You necessarily require state of the art tech to make them look gorgeous and sing, but between the two games there's like serious there's noteworthy systems changes and ways that it plays and all sorts of things that make it stand out from its predecessor and that's what i've, I've i guess i didn't get the been, have been sold on with overwatch 2 right it Same. just kind of looks like more overwatch uh but it could come out and surprise me you know, yeah it may it blow have, your mind that pve stuff yeah. may be like oh my gosh a game changer i'll never play another shooter again or yeah and and, or, and i'll end on this like i think i'm personally I think I might be somewhat unfair to to Overwatch because for a lot of other games, they don't need to do much to sell me a sequel. Like yeah. I just enjoyed the crap out of Miles Morales, and it was really similar to the Spider Man game. <laughs> That's a that, good point. That's know, a great preceded point. it. Yeah. yeah. So, I <laughs> I. <laughs> I hope Blizzard to a higher standard, and I think that's you know that's affecting me to a, to a certain degree. Mm. For good or ill, we all do. I think with Blizzard, yeah, we, we hold them to a a standard that maybe they in the last few years we you know we've seen moments of like oh yeah, we're, sure. we're strictly talking game mechanics here and not so much the soul of the company but that's yeah. true that's true speaking of which let's talk about anima rewards and how they might get better yeah let's let's talk about the soul of a sore spot for a lot of players right now <laughs> which is uh blizzard announced that they're increasing anima rewards from dungeons and raid bosses uh news that uh will be welcomed by the player base we assume i'm certainly welcoming i'm this. excited sure um I was grinding anima like crazy. And I, I'm I'm officially burned out. I'm done. I whatever where my upgrades are right now. That's where they're going to be for a while because I'm sick of it. Yeah. Um, but uh, this will happen with the next weekly reset this Tuesday, February 9th. Uh, the amount of anima dropped by Mythic Keystone dungeons and raid bosses will increase the new highs. Uh, so we've got some information on this. If you complete a Mythic Keystone at plus seven to nine, it's now going to award uh, two rare anima items. Uh, Mythic Keystones at plus 10 and higher will give three rare anima items. Yep. The first eight bosses in Nathria will drop three anima items, and Stone Generals and Sired Nathrias will now drop five anima items. I meant to get what they uh, were before as a comparison. I know at least the Mythic Keystone at plus seven to nine, giving you two rare, that's up by one. So it's basically double what you were going to get. I'm not sure on Denathrius or Stone Generals and all that. This, but, I, I don't know off the top of my head. I've, I've been rating a decent amount. Took yeah. a break the last two weeks. But um, this is I know this is a noteworthy increase, but I, I don't know the exact number yeah, this of is, what we're getting right this now. Is good. I can tell you it doesn't feel like enough. I mean, I should <laughs> I can tell you that. Well, and clearly not, and, and this is them responding to that. But I, I probably should have spent more time grinding out <laughs> anima on whatever I'm going to settle on for my main. But I had another problem this week, dude. I ended up going, I wonder how... <laughs> I wonder how my demon hunter would feel right now. Just, just, to, I just want to see. Let's get him out there helping Jane and Thrall and uh, freaking uh, Bloodhoof and all those idiots. And let's get him out of the maw. Let's just see how it feels. Let's give it a shot. So I did. They make you do all that stuff again, even if you're going to do the Threads of Fate. And uh, it's like 30 minutes of content. And here's what I learned. <laughs> um, I ended up doing only that this week. So I ended up just... Uh, doing all that stuff, getting back to Orbos, choosing uh, the Threads of Fate, and I decided to go uh, to um, freaking uh, Revendreth first. Because my in my head, I'm thinking, all right, Revendreth, Demon Hunter, I can float and double jump and do some shit other people can't do there. So Yeah, you don't need to remember your Goblin Glider. You are a Goblin Glider. I am my Goblin Glider scars, exactly. And so, <laughs> so when I got there... I the the most fun or the most I've enjoyed Revendreth is happening with this alt <laughs> because because of that 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 kind of versatility is making that place so much less of an up and down nightmare to get around and takes care of a lot of my travel problems and some would say well didn't you have a better experience when you ran the druid through there I did but that was ground level I didn't really have like being able to double jump and get to like s double sets of stairs quicker jumping off huge points of of drop and then being able to glide down where i want to be or where i need to be is massive um like the only thing better would be flying where i can go up <laughs> and so i actually really been enjoying that zone i finished it i'm out of there but um i'm at, i'm now i'm at this point where i'm so enjoying this demon hunter again 
and I'm playing Vengeance. I'm not playing Havoc. So I'm I'm rolling around, grabbing seven to eight freaking mobs at once, burning them all down. That thing feels OP. He feels OP. Okay. I'm not the, saying Demon, in my opinion, Demon Hunters always have. Yeah, they really are. That's what I, you know, leveled first in BFA and it was just ridiculous. And I didn't even do the tank spec and I still would do like seven pulls, burn it all down, grab my purple self-healing orbs afterwards and move on with my life. Yeah. So what I did, so so the other thematic thing I'm doing is I'm <laughs> started with Revendreth, after that Maldraxxus, after that Bastion, and then Ardenweald at the end. Well, why? I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with me. In my head, I maybe I'm wrong, but I really enjoy, like Maldraxxus in particular, is the one zone where, or the one covenant when this was all being talked about, where I went, I don't know, man, that's an ugly place. There's a lot of shitty stuff there. I don't know if this is going to be a place I want to spend much time. But I think some of the questing there, world quests and otherwise, are some of the best in the game right now. And I really like it there. So so for whatever's it's wrong with me. And it works. Yeah. It like it is so over the top. It yeah. is such an Iron Maiden album cover. It really it, is. It's it's great. It absolutely delivers on what it is. And you know, I think it's just the kind of thing that in a preview it just doesn't preview well. Mm-hmm. I think you just kind of look at it and like, oh, that looks a little one note. Yeah. And then you get there and it's like, wait, there's a there's a mushroom forest, there's a toxic you know, acid filled cesspool and everything else is bones and monoliths and it's delightful. Yeah. yeah. And the characters are great. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the less so obviously, and if you're doing threads of fate, cause you're not re-experiencing it, but if you're doing that, you already went through it once like the, the storyline through there is great. You know, hanging yeah. out with, with Draca and, uh, and lady Vosh, like it's really good. Yeah. It's really, really I, good. I, I am in full agreement. And the, and even, even in this threads of fate business, <clears throat> there's a big chunk where I have to spend a bunch of time with those kind of, um, I don't know what they're called. Crap. The guys that are always, they, they have the cauldrons and you go get stuff to mix in the cauldrons and I forget what they're called. But anyway, they're just creepy. Oh, tall. plague doctors? Yeah. Is that what they, is that they're just straight up called well, plague the, doctors? The main character that takes you there is, he's like a plague doctor. I forget that character's they're, name, but I love him. They're great. I mean, you know, you eventually, you end with the slime pet and yeah. oh, it's, it's really good. Yeah. It's really good stuff. So um, anyway, for whatever Whatever it's worth, I'm having fun taking my demon hunter through the through the ringer here, and I and I also I think what inspired me last week was talking about that dude who speed ran Torghast level eight or nine. He, or he's, it was. he's been unseated, by the way. I think last time I looked, he was fourth place. Oh my gosh, another demon hunter or something else? Do you know? Ah, uh, it's I I don't I don't recall from oh, memory. I don't have enough. Man, I would love right to now. know that. But that's what got me going. I was like, demon hunters seem like they're pretty good in there. I'm gonna just. And also, you know, the demon hunter can fall off one of those freaking hellscape twisty ones and land okay. <laughs> I'm not going to die. I can find yeah. my way back down to the path. I, I don't know what you do if you're a, a class that doesn't have a way to, like, land safe. The, the, is there a class that doesn't? Like, paladins can bubble. I've been heroic leaping at the last minute on on warrior to just jump off cliffs. Hunters can't. They don't have anything. You can, it you used can to be disengage, shell. I think, right before you land, and it resets the, the drop height. Oh, is I that true? Correctly. I didn't know that. I, I never knew you that. Can. Oh. It's been a while. Do you know how many times disengage. I died? Thank you. All right, chat room's con- con- confirming this. Yeah, right before you land, hit disengage, and it calculates your fall damage based on where you disengaged instead of where you jumped off. <sighs> that is... Do you know how many deaths I could have so- stopped? Jesus, Scott, come on, man. <laughs> All these years? Do you know how much time that represents? I, I love watching the moment your face just goes, wait, really? Oh, my <laughs> gosh. I hate finding that out. It was, uh, like, it was like no the man, the it's gonna change your life, dude. It's all the people it's like, the other day. It's fine. I, it's I, fine. It's fine. Nobody <laughs> shames Scott. This is great. This is what's fun about sharing game experiences with each other. Is when decades later you still learn something new. Yeah, I just figured you know with feign death and a few other get out of jail cards that you get with the hunter that they wouldn't give me anything cool to save me from a long fall just because you know there's advantages to being certain you know if you're a you're a mage you just feather fall and you're fine yeah mage and priest have the slow fall bubble for pally slow fall for for warrior disengage for hunter i'm trying to think of anyone that doesn't have how about monks what do they have oh i don't know i've never i i I tried a monk in like beta for pandaria and i was like i don't really want to hit things with my hands in this game (laughs) not really your jam yeah (laughs) not really my thing which is a shame because they've been really good for multiple expansions but Oh my gosh, I did not know yeah. this was a thing. 
Survival Hunter can yeah, harpoon man. as well, so there's another Dude, way to do Kerb's it. Dude, going to have a great time out in Revendreth now. Well, now I'm... Go, going down just got a lot easier. <laughs> I'm really curious. By the way, that would have worked uh, as a mechanic in Revendreth. Do you remember in uh, in uh, um, uh, freaking Legion in... Not Morheim. What was the name of the... the ah, what was the one that was all th- uh, Thory and freaking... Uh, shit whatever zone that was and they gave you those those uh those those stormheim there you go they had a moorheim zone in it and that's why i remember that but anyway they had those um tether when you things. get there it does someone comes out and says hello blizzcon <laughs> <laughs> hello china they'd say um so but yeah like that <laughs> sorry now i gotta play it because you said it where is it i have it somewhere here hello china can't find it okay well it doesn't matter anyway the point is oh here it is Hello, China. Hello there. Okay, anyway. So they had those tether things, like those those uh, chains. And you could, like, see a hook and click it and it'd lift you up. Revendreth, just put that in there. there it solves all your problems. Let people, have have like, you gotten your, your chain in the maw yet, Scott? No. Or am I about to blow your mind with another thing? That's no. one of the first items you can unlock if you become not trash to your reputation with uh, What's-Her-Face. Well, I'm the problem is, see this I'm describing the problem. I get far enough where I'm almost there and then I go, but what about that alt? Oh, you're all over the place, man. That's okay though. I mean, if you're having fun. Uh, I am having fun. I am having fun. I played a lot of that Demon Hunter this week and I really enjoyed it. I like the rotation on Vengeance. I like just the feel of it and um a lot more than Havoc and I was as far as I'm concerned, that's the spec for that character. Just when are you going to come slum it with me over on the Alliance, Scott? Come on. What are you like 17 alts deep? Make an Alliance one already. I mean, I have a pretty close uh, I think a druid I could take to Pandaria and finish him off, and he'd be done in five Do levels. Eat. Maybe. I forgot what server he's on, though. <laughs> Is it it on doesn't or? matter anymore. Oh, that's right. It really play. doesn't. We can, can still play, play together. Play together. It's, yeah. it's irrelevant. That's why classic rules. Nobody can do anything with each other unless you were smart enough to be on the same server. <laughs> that is actually, you know, server like pop and like knowing people locally is part of what I like about classic. But. Sure enough. Well, it's time for the main story quest. Okay, so BlizzCon line. Yeah, they stuck with the name. I never really liked it, but whatever. It's happening. The 19th and the 20th. It's this month. And uh, they're also celebrating 30 years of Blizzard this month. That's how old the company is now. Two weeks. Two weeks. That's right. How long have your bags been with you the whole time? Two weeks. <laughs> you been, is this your first time here? Two weeks. And then Arnie comes out. I know how this works. I've seen that movie. Anyway. See you at the party, Rick. <laughs> I didn't know you were a fan of that movie. Oh, dude. Oh, oh Total Recall is one of my all-time favorites. Man. I, I love watch Total once a Recall. Year. It's so good. Yeah, it was so, one of those movies I saw when I was far too young to watch it as a kid. Yeah, It has a couple of moments that are still shocking to me. Like Verhoeven movies always do, but him pulling mm-hmm. that thing out of his nose stuck with me for a while, even though I know it's all fake. Uh, their faces on Mars' surface where they can't breathe. Like That gave me nightmares as a kid. Yeah, yep, it should have. That was the scene that like, was burned in my retinas yeah him and ronnie cox out there just can't freaking breathe it's rough anyway uh here's the deal they made it a little more official this week okay they made a bigger deal out of it some hints of what's to come they put out a trailer um a few ideas of what might be in store here's a quote you'll be able to watch the entirety of the show completely free through the blizzcon website where you'll be able to choose between six channels of content covering your favorite games you'll also be able to watch the show or uh, on your favorite streaming platforms this includes Twitch and YouTube, so no exclusivity for YouTube uh, like they have with Overwatch currently. Uh, on both days, we will have a variety of events and pre-produced segments planned to bring some of the BlizzCon spirit into your homes. We'll dive deeper into Blizzard's games and universes with developers, host some fun gaming competitions featuring esports pros and a whole lot more. Here's how day one works. It kicks off at 2 p.m. Pacific time. It's a little later than I would have expected, but again, it's an online thing, so it doesn't matter. They're trying to be a little more worldwide with it, too. Something in my eye. Uh, and that'll be on Friday, February 19th, with an opening segment that includes a first look at some of the latest game content from the development teams and that uh, stuff they've been working on. Then for the next three-plus hours, you will have the option to tune into one of the six different theme channels so you can decide whether you want to sample a little bit of everything or go big and deeper into the games you're interested in the most. So World of Warcraft channel, a Diablo channel, and so on. Um, day two, they pick that back up on Saturday, at 12 noon Pacific Standard Time. And uh, that's the 20th. With multiple channels once again until the fun wraps up later that afternoon. 
Throughout the second day, uh, they'll be shining a spotlight on the global Blizzard community, including the winners of the outstanding entries in the community showcase contests and exhibitions. That includes cosplay this year. Mm, just doing it remotely, man. Standing around your costume in your own room. A little creepy. If you know I mean. Anyway. Hey, listen, as someone with multiple helmets in this very room, uh, and you know, you can you can connect the dots. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You're you're gonna be you'll be good with it. Um it says all of this will be free and archived in the BlizzCon video archives. So none of this will cost you anything. There's no virtual ticket. They are selling some stuff around this, like the 30 year anniversary mountain wow and some other stuff. A lot of that hasn't come to light yet, but the, as as always, Blizzard would like your money, but they're not charging for this event. Uh, nor nor do I think they sh should. Like, I some people have said, well, you think they're not charging for it because it's really low rent, and not very good. And my answer to that is, I, I I mean, I guess I don't honestly know, but I'm really happy that they see this as an opportunity to communicate in a massive way, in lieu of an actual event, to give us this stuff, to give us a piece of Blizzard once a year. Like, I'm glad they're doing it regardless of how this is going to actually feel. Um, yeah, well, and you, you think about why they're not doing one in person. Right. And, like, the fact that we can't be together, it is straight up not an option. Like, right. it, it's just, I think it's a real bad luck to, to do this any other way. Agreed. Uh, but that's happening, and it's coming soon, and we'll have full coverage of it. But I thought we should probably do a little predicting. We've talked about some of this, but... Uh, Right off the top of the bat uh, here in terms of, wow, what I think we should expect to see, and I'd be shocked if we didn't. <laughs> I'm basing this entirely on the fact that the trailer for Shadowlands they use for both commercials and some of their promotional material is full of CGI moments that we've not seen yet in this story of Covenant leaders. Of is that true? The, the Jailer. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Like there are, there are, I'll find the actual trailer, but there is a trailer of a fully rendered out CG, a freaking bastion angel guy with his wings going. Uh, there's another one of the jailer pinned down on the ground with a bunch of chains, looking at the camera, looking all pissed. Uh, that was in the original like short CG trailer they had for the launch of Shadowlands. At least yeah. that jailer shot. I That's can't the one I'm talking that. about. And that did not include. So it's, this is, this is my whole point. That thing they showed was all mishmash. It was like, Chop, 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 chop. There's a shot of Denathrius at some point. Sire Denathrius being a dick. Uh, <laughs> some other stuff. The Shadowlands launch CG trailer. Yes. and right Because now. it wasn't one cohesive little story bit. It was a bunch of stuff mashed together. I took that to mean, and I still stand by this, that there is a bunch of shorts queued up and ready to go as we get through this campaign. Oh, okay. Just so like that's they did the you're, last You're not game. talking about the BlizzCon line trailer. You're talking about the... The Shadowlands. Trip. Correct. Correct. Okay. And so my gotcha. thinking is BlizzCon line is a chance for them to show the next chapter in that. And they did this with uh, BFA at BlizzCon 2018. They had the, the thing with, um, uh, uh, what's his name? Orky. Anduin and Anduin Sarfang. And, and him. And having the whole conversation the in the jail and letting him out and saying, you know, you're going to come help me beat Sylvanas or whatever. So can I uh, yeah. push my glasses up for a moment? Do have it. A, 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 but actually, yeah, do it. So, but actually, <laughs> we had already seen Old Soldier before that, so there's already a bit of a precedent set yeah. for having additional shorter cinematics, mm -hmm. and we haven't had Jack uh, in Shadowlands yet. Right, but um, they didn't. There's no way they rendered out that launch footage without n having multiple uses for that stuff. Because that was a that I, was a I, montage. I'm with you there a little bit. Uh, I I do take issue by saying that it seems like it was cut up and those scenes weren't bespoke made for that trailer, which I think they were. Because uh, hmm. they're, they're they don't seem like they're in the middle of any additional story. They don't seem like they're clipped out of a longer scene. They very much seem like short vignette, like just visual scenes to to set up Shadowlands, and. I mean, well, I could a, be wrong, but I'd be very surprised. Make, this is a chance for us to have a little friendly bet. I think we're going to get three to four short mini CGI-based Warcraft story beats like we did with BFA, that that was the new template moving forward and that this will follow that template and that we just haven't seen them yet and we'll get to see them over the course of the year and a half, two years that this expansion runs. That's my I, I, I hope you're right. I'm just already kind of concerned because I went into this assuming that was going to be the case that that 
that BFA was setting this new precedent that we were going to have much more cinematic storytelling in World of Warcraft going forward. Um, but we're past the point where I was expecting the first chapter of that, at least. Yeah, and, I mean, you're and not wrong. we haven't seen it. Also, um, but why? And, here's a, here's a question for you. Why was the jailer? Why is the jailer all chained up in that brief sequence? If not part of a story we haven't heard yet, you know what I mean. Like, I'm I'm with you there, but then also why go through the effort of making a Denathrius model when he's already been dealt with? Flashbacks. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you could. You're good. You're right. Uh, you're right. I don't know. Um, I don't know. But yeah, I mean, I'm. You're you're not completely off off base. I'm 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 kind of I am nitpicking here, but I, it's fun. It's fun to nitpick in this way. Like I'm it. like I don't know. Some of this looks like it was very mu much bespoke for this trailer. Yeah. Um, you know, and so like Denathrius is is punching a, a big fat hole, I think, in your in your theory here. But you're right about you're damn right about the uh, the jailer. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I everything about that shot of seeing the jailer chained up points to this is before we meet the jailer. Plus, I just can't imagine the game going like just from a workflow perspective, knowing enough people to work in the industry in the animation departments at various companies and some that I know at Blizzard. They like to be able to do stuff they can use again. It's a good pipeline to save, not just save money, but save time and hours and everything else and, and also pr produce additional output. A good example was the original um, Heroes of the Storm trailer, which featured no new models. Everybody in that trailer were models and, 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 um, and uh, you know, riggings that came from all the other trailers they made. So that Diablo uh, rig was from Diablo 3 the rig for uh, all the StarCraft people in there from StarCraft and so on. And they were all just brought to better, together, and there's still work that has to be done to mash them all up. But they're not doing that stuff from scratch for that trailer. And in this case, I just I don't think you go through all that trouble, all that environmental work, all that character work, all that everything, to make just a bastion guy with big broad wings for just one second of film. I just can't imagine it. So it's just purely based on that, honestly. That's my whole reasoning, is that, why would you CGI out everything that entails that one shot of him going Voof, with his wings and have it last less than half a second and we're never going to see anything again. I just, I just don't buy it. So we'll see. We'll see. I'm excited, but that's the bet. And if I'm right, Garrett owes me nothing. If I'm wrong, I'll send him this stack of fat $100 bills. You see this? Whoops. You see this chat room? Look at this. You know how much money that is? It's fake. It's not real. Right. It's zero because it's, it's zero not real dollars. money. <laughs> it's not real money. It doesn't exist. Uh, yeah, listen. I mean, I'm, I'm I'm on board with you. Like, it is suspicious that they made all those models. Yeah, uh, but it's also weird that Denathrius is one of them, and it kind of seems like we're done with him for now. It's a fair point. I hadn't really thought about him much, but you're right. Like, because when he we is, first saw that thing, we don't know what happened to him, and then found out pretty quick. Yeah, because and, and you know, he's not dead, so he could come back, which is another point. Yeah, that I guess we could bring up. So. That's you know, true. Just because that it seems like that scene is taking place kind of at his peak of power, you know, it doesn't mean that they couldn't then reutilize that model for some kind of you know post raid. I hope we run cinematic. into. I want Nathanos to make an uh, an appearance. But th th this is where I'm burned. As I saw that, I was like, oh, oh, they've got models for every zone. We're gonna have a cinematic for each zone. We've already done the leveling. Leveling is over. There's no cinematics. Yeah. Um. So I got like my own personal hype, and then it like never happened, and now I'm just like. Well, we haven't even gotten like a single extra cinematic, so I'm I'm kind of like I don't know what they're doing next. Well, but. here's hoping they totally surprise you. That's what I want. I want that yeah, for you. I, I hope I hope so too. I hope we get that. I hope we get like one new cinematic, like like proper yeah. pre-rendered cinematic, and then I hope we get like another in-game cinematic. You know, a la the Terror of Darkshore, sure. because I think that was the same year, wasn't it? We yeah. got the the Sour Fang and a win like pre-render, and then we also got the surprise. Malfurion is actually a badass cinematic. Yep. yep. That was the biggest revelation in all of Warcraft history that Malfurion's a badass sometimes because it's a rare. Apparently, ter turns out, you know, you don't become leader of an entire people by just taking a nap for 100 years <laughs> and walking around going, oh, Tyrande. Like he's just such a weenie. <laughs> but in that trailer, phew, gloves came off, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah let's but... see. What else? Uh, other things I was thinking. Obviously, Diablo 4 update of some sort and probably a ton of stuff around that. Hopefully, some Overwatch 2 information. Do you think we'll get hero stuff? Like, where do you think you're, where do you think their head's at on, like, showing that off? I'm mildly concerned. Hmm. 
I'm mildly concerned about heroes. So heroes did make the key art. There's a a, a death a hero specific Deathwing like monolith hanging over the whole key art. Yeah. Um, but that's true. I didn't think about that. Yeah, that's in there. Yeah, I'm not sure. And and they they did come out and admit that Hogger was supposed to be a BlizzCon hero. Oh, interesting. Um, and so Hogger's already in the game and running amok and has already been nerfed because he launched a little strong. That is the um, most freaking BlizzCon ass heroes announcement I can think of too, because they love these, the uh, you know, like Ch- Chogall, and you know they love to do these like mm-hmm. gimmicky ass, you know, nostalgia plays in front of an audience. It's, it's, yeah, it it's sense. that, or it's like it's it's like real crowd pleasers, like Alex Straza Hanzo, right? Yeah, yeah, like how many damn Alex Straza cosplays are are out in force at every BlizzCon ever like that is a popular uh, character out of the Warcraft well or that or the like Um, the year that they did Jaina Thrall and then said oh but we're not done and then it was Cho'Gall it was like and he's free if you bought the BlizzCon thing everyone got tickets and everything it was like a moment for them to do that but Hogger was he is definitely one of those stunt casters yeah that I I, that would have I feel like that would have played so well at a live BlizzCon right just like And oh, and and one more thing, and like Hogger comes out on screen for Heroes of the Storm, and everyone loses their mind. Yeah, It'd be great. We got um, a quick. There's a quick so, question in the chat. I want to ask you real fast before I forget. Uh, the Star Hammer says, "What do you guys think about Blizzard charging for their 30th anniversary mount?" I'm a little bummed out about it. I, I like when Blizzard says, "Hey, we had 30 years on the backs of millions of gamers over these years. Here's a, here's us giving back something." I would have liked that personally. Because I'm not that interested in that gold bull thing. It's not really my jam. So I'm probably not going to buy it. But what do you think about that sort of stuff? Um, I mean, they're going to make money. They're always going to they're always going to charge for what they can. It's a business. I get it. But do you, So when they give us stuff for anniversaries in World of Warcraft without paying, it's for World of Warcraft's anniversary and not Blizzard's anniversary. Yeah. So true. I don't personally think there's a precedence for it. Um, I don't. <laughs> care <laughs> is my answer <laughs> yeah it doesn't um, matter that much i have no strong feelings to me it's another blizzcon mount and there's been a ton of there's been blizzcon mounts in the past there's been blizzcon costumes there's been blizzcon pets uh there's always in-game swag with blizzcon so to me this is just right along the way the fact that they've you know they're slapping a 30 logo on everything is yeah. because it's their 30th year and they happen to also be doing a blizzcon this is true. So t- to me, it just kind of seems like whatever. Like I've got ten years of World of Warcraft steins out in my cabinets out there that I got at BlizzCon just because I happen to be at BlizzCon during World of Warcraft's ten year anniversary. Yeah, I guess what the question is: Do I feel like they owe me something? No. Do I wish it was free? Yes. Do I care that much in the end? Not really. I mean, I think they owe me better business practices so I can feel good about being a fan again. But <laughs> in, ter- in terms of in terms of being a mount. Or like owing me a mount or whatever. I'm just like, ah, whatever. It's yeah. You want to make me celebrate your 30 years? Show me some uh, old fashioned Blizzard uh, company values, you know, like in force, which I know they can't. You know, they're a little bit hindered by, they're hamstrung by, with uh, with Activision now. But I, you know, show it, me some it of that. Hit me this week with the earnings call and with like more like again being reminded of of, of Kotick being like it's the best year ever and all the jokes i think rightfully that came out being like time to fire people yeah. um <laughs> my brain just went god this feels like the eisner <laughs> disney years <laughs> yeah yeah you're not wrong um yeah. all right sorry back to heroes you you're worried do you think we get anything is there any kind of presentation is there even its own dedicated channel in all this or they said six I, I mean so they said so here's here's a fun exercise we can go through to roundabout way answer that question scott they said they've got six channels one dedicated to a game yeah what are the six channels so we're going to assume Warcraft, we're going to assume Diablo, probably Immortal and Diablo, same channel. So not separate games or separate channels for those. So Warcraft, Diablo, that's two. Overwatch, probably Overwatch, three. three. Um, probably Hearthstone, four. Hearthstone definitely gets its own channel. Yeah, I would assume so. Because we're, we're, we're at the precipice of the standard rotation and the first expansion of that new standard rotation. Oh, so they, they've got a lot of Hearthstone stuff to talk about. So that's four. So that's four. What would five be? You know what? I'm going to say Starcraft Heroes is getting a is, channel. StarCraft is basically done. I don't think StarCraft gets its own channel. No, I don't think so either. Or if it does, it shares one with Heroes. But I, I, since there's two slots left, I think Heroes gets one. Unless there's a new game announcement. <laughs> it's entirely possible that they... There's okay. a lot of... You're right. I mean, they could have a mobile 
channel mm -hmm. if they're announcing a new mobile game. Mm -hmm. And so it could be combo immortal mobile games. Well, also breaking news, uh, Mumper, a.k.a. Um, oh, my gosh. His name just left me. What's wrong with me? Uh, anyway, Mumper. Are you trying to recall his real name? <laughs> yeah. Why am I not remembering his real I name? I remember Mumper's real name. Corey either. Stockton. Jeez Louise. <laughs> there it is. I've only interviewed him five times or something. Corey Stockton's Twitter account now says game lead, but not what game it is. Here, I'll look it up. Oh, well, the the lead balance designer on Here's the Storm just left uh, just left for a secret project within Blizzard just this That's week. True. Casey That's right. Jackson, there was an announcement. No longer on the Heroes team. I saw that. Okay, here it is. We are. Husband and uh, dad and beer lover, runner, tech geek, and Lego fanatic, raised by Nintendo, game director at Blizzard Entertainment. That's a change. He, that's a change. I don't know what that is, but I love Corey's work. So uh, who knows? Maybe they finally sussed out in all these games that they were like prototyping internally, and they finally found the one, and they're sticking with it. And he's your guy. I don't know. Corey's rad, so I'm I'm excited for whatever happened there. But uh, anyway, I'm, yeah. I mean, maybe this leaves. Okay, so even if Heroes gets its own channel, that still leaves one channel left. Is that a general channel where everything's sort of you know, summarized, or is that a channel for something they haven't announced yet? And I don't know. I wonder if that's like community because they usually like have like a community stage, yeah, that's uh, true. where they have voice actor panels and you know they bounce all over the place. But again, if you were doing that, you could roll that like you probably wouldn't mix like your Warcraft voice actor panel with your Overwatch voice actor panel. So yeah, you, you could still divvy those up amongst their their game specific. But true. True. yeah, you know, had they not basically put starcraft in maintenance mode i would say easy it's warcraft overwatch diablo heroes hearthstone starcraft yeah that's six but yeah. i don't think starcraft has its own channel they basically never talk about esports plans at blizzcon so i don't think there's going to be an esports channel that stuff's pulled way back yeah 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 way they have their back. they like do tournaments there but they don't because every year this comes back around, like you know, this year for Hearthstone, it's like, when are we getting news about the next year of esports? And yes. it just wasn't Jack until like last week. They were yeah. like, uh, by the way, it's going the same way as StarCraft. They're they're shopping it out to ESL. Yeah, they're going to third party um, it, which is probably where it should have stayed to begin with. But I, whatever. yeah, I agree. Actually, I think it's yeah. a lot healthier for the future of the of the esport personally. Yeah. If you're um, sport, and I trust if, ESL, and they last year merged with DreamHack, so like talk about a, a power company. Yeah, they're big. They, that is esports, as far as I'm concerned now. Yeah, um, yeah. So there's, I, I don't know. Yeah, I think maybe just a general Blizzard channel. Like they have, like maybe they have a the virtual main stage. Yeah, a couple of and, couple of people running mics and talking. Like I don't know. I don't know what yeah. any of this looks like. The pre-recorded stuff's very interesting to me because I hope that's where we get the. Because I know we're gonna get a lot of Zoom boxes type stuff. Um, just cause for any of the live stuff. But I hope you're ready to see the webcam quality of <laughs> everyone that works at Blizzard. Exactly. If and and then what I hope is that gets offset by some pr produced stuff that they've been doing in the meantime, uh, with you know with people. I don't know that they are or not. I, I don't know. I want more trailers. I want CG. I want. I would love it if they gave us an update on this deal they were supposedly working on for Overwatch original animated series stuff. Like where's that at? I haven't heard anything about that. The Diablo animated show that they were working on. Haven't heard anything about that. Would love to hear more about that side of things if that's even happening now. Um. Anyway, we'll see what happens. Lots to think about. But now, this. Time for me to try to stump Garrett in a little game we call Know Your Lore. Yeah, that's right. I'm going to showcase a, a character. In this case, I'm continuing down the road of uh, a boss character from... Uh, is, that, oh, is that what the segment <laughs> was called? I thought it was called Oh No. Oh No, lore. it's my turn to guess a thing. Uh, there are no stakes other than it's just fun, uh, but I'm going to give you one here that was... This Here's your hint. It was a mis it was misattributed when I found it. It was misattributed to a voice actor. It said it was Christopher Lee, the guy who played Saruman, uh, and millions of other things. It's not Christopher Lee, I found out. Um, the hint I will give you is that he also does Hanzo's voice. That's all you get. Now you got to tell me... You'll have 10 questions you can ask me about what expansion, what raid... Bye, bye bye all that kind of stuff but that's all on you uh right now so let's start it off here's your here's your sound file see if you can guess who this is the unworthy have not yet learned of my power 
War God Al Chukla, add my strength to your own. All right, so that guy's super pissed. Do you know who that is? I can tell you right now, I'm getting this one wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll give, I'm going to give you a narrowed down hint because, and it may be obvious, but uh, given the the accent that's affecting this character or whatever, but this is a Pandaria boss. Yeah, it sounds like Pandaria. Yeah. My the reason I know I'm going to be wrong is because I remember the name of no bosses from Pandaria, <laughs> <laughs> except Garrosh. Yeah. I remember Garrosh. Yeah, it was, he's a memorable dude. And that's it. It's uh, it's definitely a Mogu. If I had to have a guess, I would say it's from the Thunder Isle raid. Well, you are a lot but, closer than I thought you'd be at this stage. Yeah, I do, no, I just know I'm going to get it wrong because I literally can't recall a, the name of a single damn Mogu. Well, the Mogus are, you know, they're uh, uh, they're an elusive bunch. <laughs> is is it a Mogu? It is. Is a Mogu? You, and you were right. Uh, well, you answer. You, you didn't. You didn't get an answer to it, but I'll answer it for you. It was from the Isles, the Thund- Thunder Isles, was it? Hold on. So the the Throne of Thunder raid. There you go. Correct. Come. You have you have a total of six more questions you can ask. <laughs> can I, I get take. a list of all of the bosses from that raid as a multiple choice option? <laughs> the answer is no. Uh, then I, I I straight up do not know. I don't know the name of a single boss in that raid because I, I did not raid it, that raid. I will tell you in the voice of uh, Lorewalker Cho who this is. Okay, so let's let's do this Ken Burns style. <laughs> Pandaria, her hills of gold, in dark and mournful times of old, did once a hopeless honor hold, when from her sacred veil did spring with storm and flash and monstrous thing. His name was Li Shen, the Thunder King. I'll see you later, Martha. Uh, yeah, Li Shen, uh, Li Shen is his name. He's uh, Emperor Li Shen, pronounced Lei Shen. I guess I'm saying it wrong. Uh, also known as the Thunder King, he was the first emperor of the Mogu and the most powerful warlord in Mogu history. After stealing the power of the storms from Titan Keeper Ra, uh, he united the Mogu clans into the first great Mogu empire. Um, and it goes on and on and on. Eventually, uh, he is your second antagonist in the Mists of Pandaria, kind of your mid-raid, your middle-term raid. Mm. in that game which i really enjoyed mm. i remember re- quite liking uh throne of thunder as a piece of it content. is it is gorgeous looking yeah. uh, at the time i remember being very impressed when i when i farted around in lfr i uh was so disinterested in the mogu lore that i paid attention to absolutely nothing in there <laughs> uh from a lore perspective sure um sure sure yeah the i do uh, enemies in pandaria i like i still would say that that expansions of my top three. Mm-hmm. I find the enemies uh, utterly forgettable, <laughs> and I don't really care for them. Um, I don't like the Mogu. Uh, I, I think they're kind of bland. Um, and the same goes for the for the insect people. Um, oh, interesting. The, the Klaxi, the, uh, yeah, the Klaxi. Uh, not really your not my favorite. Thing. Yeah, I don't like big beetles either. Not really my thing. Uh, let me quickly give some credit to the to the uh, the guy who did voice it. His name is Paul Nak- Nakuchi. I think how you say it. He is a voice actor, does a lot of stuff for a lot of things, including a bunch of Marvel stuff, some Star Wars cartoons, uh, tons of video games, including World of Warcraft, Miss of Pandaria. He played a whole bunch of characters, including Li Shen. Uh, he was in Diablo mm. 3 Reaper of Souls as Malthale. He was in Heroes of the Storm and Overwatch as Hanzo uh, and Malthale, for that matter. Yeah, there's a, uh, funny enough, there's two voice actors attributed to Hanzo. Oh, no way. Let's see. Yeah, Paul, N- N- I would almost say Nakauchi is one of them, and the other one is uh, Shuhei Sakaguchi. Oh, I didn't know there were two dudes. That's weird. All right. Well, something must have changed hands there. Uh, but yeah. anyway, he's uh, he's your guy. He's pretty rad. He was in Battle for Azeroth as well, though they don't tell him tell me what credit he uh, played. So anyway, I like voice actors. They deserve a little Probably a guy well. I remember the name of. Yes. Yes. <laughs> well done. You passed. Good job. Okay. Well, that'll do it for that. Now this. Mr. Johnson, I have I have questions. Well, good, because I got answers. The instance at gmail.com is the email address to send your emails to. We got one here from Adam who says, Hey instance crew, just thought or sorry, just a few insights on WoW Classics population based on my personal experience still playing that game. That goes along with your TBC discussion or the uh, Burning Crusade that we talked about last week. From what I can see. The major uh, majority of classic players do not play retail. 
In my raiding guild with uh, 50 or so consistent raiders, only five play retail at all. In regards to leveling new characters 1 to 70 for TBC, many classic players are already doing this. The community already knows who the top classes are going to be for TBC, so many warriors and rogues are already leveling up caster alts to switch to because they know how far melee classes fall off in TBC. That's interesting. Um, he also says, thirdly, the main concern going into TBC is gold. With the amount of rampant botting slash gold buying that has occurred in Classic, just like the old days, uh, people have hundreds, hundreds of times more gold now than they would have ever had in vanilla. It will only get worse if Blizzard doesn't do more about it. As an example, single items on my server have sold for 40k gold in runs before. Uh, love the show, though, Adam. Uh, well, that's interesting, especially the second bit. I, it, you know, mass alt leveling to be ready for what you remember TBC was famous for, which is a shift to a more powerful class in endgame or whatever, is a fascinating thing here, right? Because on the one hand, you're playing this old stuff for all the reasons you want to play the old original stuff, but then you're assuming that this is coming. Like you're, you are, that's a lot of work for your assumption doing an alt 60 in vanilla to say, well, I want to be ready for TBC when casters, you know, take center stage. That's to me, that sounds crazy, but I guess people have time. So go for it. I mean, hooray for all of you. Uh, but anyway, thoughts, Garrett feelings. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's, it, it we kind of, got into an adjacent conversation with this when classic was originally coming out, which was saying just like, you can't recreate your lack of knowledge right. that you had going into vanilla world of Warcraft. We already yeah. know it. Yeah. Um, but I don't think that's inherently a bad thing. Like it's just a different experience yeah. and that's okay. Yeah, I think so. Um, in terms of the gold bloat. Uh, yeah. That's kind of its own, <laughs> its own concern. Yeah. Um, but also don't you think it feels like, for some reason my echo thought i was talking to her uh for some for some reason it strikes me that this has been easier for gold uh farmers sellers and botters this time around because they've had the previous experience and they know how to maximize it and blizzard really isn't doing much or enough to to curb it so right. it's like a new problem like it's a compounding, It's it was already an old problem, but it's an on top of it problem that they may have wanted to, I don't know, I don't know what they could have done, but they may have wanted to think about that a bit more, have something more in place like they do with retail to protect classic without messing with the gameplay, but protect it from the gold farming horde. Uh, and that didn't happen. So anyway, yeah, we'll see. It's interesting to me, that whole, that transition, if there is one to, burning crusade as as a as a either a classic add-on replacement or whatever i find fascinating so we will see what uh, did surprise me uh, how many people in his guild only a few of them are even poking their heads in retail um, it's you know there were a lot of people playing on private servers that were yeah. not playing retail wow back before classic was a thing i had a couple of friends that's exactly what they did it's not interested at all some people just prefer the older world of warcraft i think that's fine because it's not that means it's not taking away from the player pool of retail world of Warcraft. It is just an additional player pool that otherwise wouldn't have been playing. Wow. Yeah. It's yeah. kind of like they, they, they've been having this conversation with uh, the, the new modes getting added into Hearthstone. Um, and uh, uh, Ixar, one of the developers over there has been kind of saying that like, Hey, our, <laughs> our our population is big enough it's okay we're not yeah. worried about queue times and then you know i talked to our we have I'm friends with some of the people over at hs replay yeah we're pulling hearthstone stats and they're like yeah uh battlegrounds is wild like the amount of like it's that it, we get more they get more stats for that than they get for standard like constructed hearthstone oh wow but they're not getting fewer standard constructed hearthstone replays coming in oh. so it's just like there's just more yeah there's just more pl people playing that game than played it before right that's the point, isn't it? That's why they did it. This yep. isn't them going, all right, we'll appease you people who love vanilla. Here you go. Here's the free thing you're going to get. They knew they would just uh, get you, more people yeah. to play and pay. So, so I'm, get, I'm, getting a, uh, I'm getting a master's right now. I went back to school for uh, digital strategy, and I'm, I'm learning all kinds of things about lead generation and sure. whatnot. And uh, this week is brand extension. Uh, and that is exactly what this is. Yeah. It's an extension of the World of Warcraft brand. Yeah. 
that's uh that's that's super interesting by the way i think it's really cool that you're doing that and also soon you'll be the smartest guy in the room and the rest of us will be dummies it's gonna be great. oh i don't know have you a lot of our listeners have phds that's true <laughs> that's a good point and some of them are very smart nice people all right yes that's all I'm gonna say. and a couple uh, of them also make concerns. me feel dumb <laughs> Uh, all right. Well done. A good email there, Adam. Please keep these coming. We love your emails. The instance at gmail.com. We would be happy to read them on the show. You can support us over at theinstance.net and become an Instance Plus member. Do that today because there's a new month right here Looking, we're looking at. And you get all kinds of cool stuff if you do it. So go in there and check it out. I got new art coming up in the day or so. I think I'm going to do something covenant related. I haven't decided yet. I don't know what I'm going to do. Last month I'm I did enough the... enough time to do a new card back. Oh, yeah, we should totally do that. Yeah, it'd be fun. Um, the last yeah. one I did was for the little, I forget the owl guys. What are they called? The um, the, the Swolkin. <laughs> yeah, the Swolkin. I forget what they're actually called. The, actually, the Bastion dude, owl, owly dudes. Anyway, that's what I drew last time. Next up, who knows? Something else from another faction, I think, or from another covenant. So that's all really cool stuff. If you want to check it out, go uh, look it up over at the You should do the dredges from... Uh, from- uh, Rev and Dreth. They're hilarious. Oh, yeah, I love those, those guys. Great. Those little, uh, the little, uh, oi, mate, you want me to put a baby? Those guys, right? The little, yes, yeah, guys. The, yeah, yeah, the, the cockney thugs that yeah. are the size of a battle pet. I those love those guys are great. If they're not, they're, if there's not a battle pet with one of them in there soon, then what are we even doing? Anyway, uh, yeah. <laughs> more details over there at theinstance.net. Before we get out of here, we both always have a lot of other stuff going on, and we like to mention it here. Garrett, what's going on at amove.tv this week? Oh, all sorts of things. Uh, you want to hear about a lot more about the little little taste you got of the Heroes of the Storm discussion that we had on today's episode? Go check out Into the Nexus. Mm. Uh, Kyle and I just put out a new episode yesterday talking about AZ Jackson leaving the team for some super secret Blizzard project. Um, and the fact that we still don't know who his replacement is, but he made a long, uh, he went out of his way to say, this person's been around since the beginning of Heroes, and Whoa. I trust them and have vetted them myself. Wow. So I'm just like, who is it? Yeah, who you have back oh. there? Who you've been holding yeah. on to? Mm. Yep. And of course, there's the Angry Chicken, and there's Wow Killer with me and Tally yes, And if you want more of my Wow thoughts, yeah. we just put a new episode out this morning, as a matter of fact. So never hurts to have that British voice on there, too. You know, just adds. No, a no. You know, you know, you really need to draw World of Warcraft opinions out of Tally Essen. Like, it's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, you He's really definitely gotta... not already full of them. But, but when you do, there's yeah. some great stuff there. Yeah, when he finally lets it spill. Uh, Good stuff can be picked out of it. So uh, go check all that out. Of course, there's plenty going on on the Frog Pants Network as well. Many, many podcasts. If you like deeper discussions about core gaming, then you might like a video game podcast called Core that I do with John Jagger and Bo Schwartz. We just did one last night and had a huge discussion about uh, Mass Effect and its new remastered trilogy that's coming in March. Or no, sorry, May. Who'd you, who'd you romance, Scott, your first time through? Uh, what's her name from... Oh jeez, I can't remember her character name, but I but but the but she's the human chick played by the lady that used to be on that TV show. Right uh, now, she's on The Handmaid's Tale, and I can't think of her name. Something Wackachowski, Chakachi Chowski. She's like a Russian name or Ukrainian descent, and I can't think of her name. What's the name? I, I don't know because I haven't watched any of the shows that you just mentioned oh, and I'm terrible about the voice cast on frick. Mass Effect. Anyway, the main lady that hangs out with Shep all the time, with Shepard. I played male Shepard and I and I romanced her. Yvonne Sh- Shavivsky is her name, Lodvar. That's correct, but I don't remember her name in Mass Effect. Anyway, Miranda, <laughs> that's it, Miranda, Miranda. Oh, Miranda. okay. All right, yeah, that's that. So Kyle and I were talking about this a few weeks ago. And uh, I, I also romanced Miranda, and the whole chat room shamed me. They're like, Garrett, you went with the basic choice. You're so boring. Oh, man, whatever. I think Miranda was good looking and nice and <laughs> had to work with her and stuff. I, I There was a temptation briefly for some lady that was on the bridge that was just like an ensign type person. I don't remember her name. <laughs> it was a long time ago, dude. I, I've forgotten a lot oh, about that yeah, game. Yeah, I mean, Mass, what, Mass Effect 1, I think it I wasn't in high school when it came out, but it was like early college when Mass Effect started coming out for me. Oh, it's so good. I, I'm very uh, excited about that. Hopefully it's a, a a proper thing, and it sounds like they're bringing one more in line with the way 2 and 3 played, and 
that's important for me because one was yeah one's hard to revisit which is is a shame because yeah. there's, there's some really cool story arcs in it but yeah. the controls are just kind of booty yeah, they're kind of poop but uh anyway that's coming yeah. soon i hope it's on game pass that'd be my that'd be my wish but i don't think it's going to be at least not right away uh as part of ea play but uh find more discussion like that over at frogpants.com slash core or wherever you get your podcasts i think you'll like it it's gonna do it for us thank you all for listening watching being here live uh, if you're like live what wait it's live it sure is every friday at 12 30 mountain time uh, we're sitting here recording this thing and if it's ever different we'll let you know but right now that's what time it is so please come and join us live if you are in uh that kind of mood uh that's gonna do it for us big thanks everybody for watching we'll be back and at it again next week we'll see you then This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Yes. Get more at frogpants.com. Chat room, I agree. ME1 has the strongest story, maybe, but the worst gameplay. <laughs>